Well, I'm now joined by the captain of Uranani, that is Landry Indukumana, who also impressed here today with his performance. How would you sum up the performance? I'm sure this is the start that you guys wanted. Uh, but so for us, our target was was to win the first game, and the whole team, the whole team was focused about the first game. So. It was a very big scoreline here today. Where did you think you guys dominated in this match? So we dominated inside the paint. The guys were driving, passing, kicks. So we shared the ball. Yeah. And uh, going into the next game, uh, what strengths will you be taking on to make sure that you guys maintain this winning momentum? So we got to do the same, the, the same job we we done today. Yeah. Welcome. Keep the same road, yeah. Well, congratulations. No, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that is uh, Landry Ndugumana, who is the captain of Uranani, now joined by the captain of uh, Kenya Ports, that is uh, Job Oyodi. Captain, I'm sure this is not the start that you really wanted for this tournament. Exactly. Exactly. It's not the start that we wanted, but um, we take it. We take it. Yeah. Quite a big difference in that score line, a very low score for your side. Uh, what would you have attribute that to? Um, I think it's because of the lights, the way we started, it was an awful start for us. I think the lights took us out, like um, the way we had planned the game, everything just didn't, didn't go as we had planned. Yeah. And uh, tactically, what do you think you guys need to work on in order to make sure that you start yielding those results? Uh, boxing out, scoring. Uh, be up tempo on defense, everything. You just, you just do have to do everything. You have to throw everything right now. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, unlike Ian, thank you so much. Okay, thank you.
Well, I'm now joined by the coach of uh, Material Magic, that is uh, Abed Chibako. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Uh, very important tournament here today. Let's talk about your, pre your preparations for this tournament. Okay, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, preparation hasn't been easy, but uh, I think we've worked with what we've had all along. So, yeah, I think we're, we're good to go. And uh, you did also lament that you haven't had enough friendlies to make sure that you're fully ready. So would yeah. you say that you've selected the right team to make sure that you guys get over the line? Um, yes, we have. Um, I know there's always that one extra person you could have got, but I think we, we're good for now. It's, uh, it's beyond our control now. We, we're good with the team that we selected coming here. And uh, looking at your opponents here today, strategic. Most times they've, uh, they've beaten us, so we, you know, we look at it, uh, a lot of video, how they play, so we just want to come and give them a game so that uh, you know, they know we're no pushovers. Thank you coach, all the best. Thank you. Coach Lewis uh, Lopez joins me here today, head coach of Ferro Biaro. Thank you so much for your time. It's a, a very competitive match that you have here against Matero Magic. Uh, let's talk about that match and what you expect from your opponents today. Uh, they are a good team. They have uh, new players. Um, uh, they fight a lot. And then uh, let's, let's go. Let's go to try to do our best and we'll see what happens at the end team applies themselves uh, uh, the way you want to and ex execute the game plan effectively we try to do every day the same thing we try to do, to do our best and we are enthusiastic for be here um, just it trying to to do our best um, and trying to enjoy the company team because they always try to coach all the best thank you I cannot hear several.
Ellis Park Arena is the venue for the third game in our quadruple header. It is time now for Ferviario de Beira to take on Matero Man. We are a family and we enjoy a lot to spend time together. That is the key for us, enjoy and do our best. That is our goal every day. We finish uh, champions in the Elite 16 and that is very good for us because it was a great time for us. Hopefully we can have uh, the same feeling again. Matero Magic is from Zambia, Lusaka. Very big tournament indeed. Uh, we didn't do very well in the qualifiers. We never had the players that we wanted to come with in the first place when we went to Tanzania. Joburg is different now. We've got a few players that we want, and uh, I think we expect different results this time around. It doesn't get much better than this. It's going to be a Southern Hemisphere battle as Zambia takes on Mozambique, the best of Zambia in terms of the Matero Magic against the champions of the Division East last year, Ferroviario de Beira. Coach Luis Lopez of Ferroviario de Beira still back at the helm, picking up and re-signing Will Perry, who's in short, wearing number 12. And in terms of Matero Magic coming through, by virtue of the wild card spot, they went winless throughout their the group play. But here they are in Johannesburg. And we have a look at our officials, Amir Abolo, Waylon Ficadu, and Maiga Yusuf, crew chief. Amir Abolo in the center who will be taking care of all of the responsibility right here for this wonderful competition. Now we've seen two really different kind of games already to start out this division each qualification, division east qualification and it's the time now for Matero Magic and Ferroviario de Beira to state their case for qualification into the Basketball Africa League in 2023. Ferroviario de Beira have been there before. They have won out Division East before. So there's a lot more pressure on them and they've made a couple of new additions. I am Quentin Denison. I'm not alone. I'm alongside Mpumi Ramatsoha and I'm really looking forward to this one. It is going to be an exciting one, Q. You can expect Debeira to really try and stamp their authority on this game to begin their campaign strong coming in as the defending champions of this particular division of qualification. Well, that's the thing about the Basketball Africa League is that everyone's a champion. The teams that are here have beat out the best in their region to come and state their case in terms of being the best on the continent. And that's why there's so much pride, Coach Luis Lopez, as I mentioned before, he has been here before and he knows what it takes in order for them to advance. Absolutely, and you know Q, they're gonna be looking to try and go back to the BAL to make a better performance. You know, they won out the East Division last year, but only managed to go one of four in the BAL 2022 campaign. And coach Obed Chamboko was quite restrained in his pre-match, little pre-match preview but he understands the job that is at hand. There's, there is probably less pressure on Matero Magic because, because of how they qualified, but the fact that they are here means that it's a level playing field. It's an opportunity for Matero Magic to qualify for the Basketball Africa League, and I can tell you just how much that means to all the players on both sides as they get ready for this really choice encounter. This is a team, though, we haven't seen them win a bunch of games, going 0-3 in the previous round of this competition, and then going 0-2 last year in the Division East, going down to New Stars as well as host Cape Town Tigers. They're going to be looking to make a statement as well. They're going to be trying to get a win at this level for the first time. 
and so you can expect them to come out hard as well and on that team look out for Leroy as well as Makulubai who lead this team in scoring and shoulder a bulk of that offensive responsibility. Now when you talk about uh, tried and tested Will Perry very impressive in his 2022 BAL campaign, the really standout point guard, new captain in uh, Melindo Novella, who picks up the captaincy in terms of this uh, Ferroviario de, de Beira outfit. And they have some new faces, they have some old one. Ishmael Nemamade will be on the floor, and he's deceptive at times, can score in bunches around different times. But one thing that stood out, well, at least on paper, is that the Matero Magic team can be just a little bit bigger, and they will be physical on the boards. And, you know, you spoke about returners. They're definitely going to miss the services of Jamil Kennedy, who was their leading scorer last season in the Basketball Africa League, averaging 15.6. First attempt blocked. Now there's more defense, and that one is controlled. Douglas Kandulu is a real presence in the paint. And Q looking to replace Jamil Kennedy. They did acquire the services of Michael Murray who we've seen starting this game already for De Beira. You see him there in the shot in the number nine jersey. Yeah, definitely a, a standout with that hairstyle. You, you can't miss Michael Murray too much on, on, on shot. And uh, we'll get to see what sort of impact Team Saini is on the floor for Ferroviario De Beira. Still only first position. Both teams will have seen the first couple of games and so there may be some relaxation but I don't think you'll see too too, too much relaxation in execution. Namamade. He drives in, drops off, Murray tries a little now the magic. Kainda. Now they got a chance to try and work in the post in isolation for Ndoy. Ndoy kicks across. There's the head fake and drive aside the left hand not there but Cantulu's length on the follow, he gets the first two and opens the scoring for the Magic. They'll be happy that they could get on the board first before this Dabeira team. Namamaira to Terry. Tightly guarded. Terry pulls from the elbow under pressure. And Dulu cleans up again. Not usually a characteristics we see of Perry's game. He's usually more of a facilitator. Yes, he scores in bunches, but a forced contested shot like that, not usually something we see him do. Candulo spikes it home with two hands and announces the magic here in Johannesburg. That was a lovely find just underneath the rim so he could throw that down. Well, activity from the big. You see the turn and miss. And then Kandulu right there just towers over Obish in the post for the pretty two. Now there's some activity from Ndoy and Kandulu. Well, there's a foul called. Technical foul. And just hear the referees wanting the removal of the plaster. Two shots off the ball, foul called. And that was on Doi. So just an uh, incident occurring. I think just off camera on the turn and it must have been quite aggressive. Yeah, and that's something you don't want. The team hasn't been able to score yet and you send them to the free throw line to try and get an easy two. Lucky for Magic though, DeBerry missed both. Still empty. Perry picks up, goes by his teammate Murray and he skies for two on the baseline. See, that's more of a William Perry shot there. Wide open, created some space and is able to knock down the jumper floor leader and definitely a playmaker a turnover the mamade up and in beautiful read that was a glorious pass from Numa Mande, just putting it up into the air to find his teammate who throws it down Mungoambe and the mamade have played together for 
quite a long time. And just finding the connection there on that one. Beautiful play. A little floater, short. Perry now to push into the corner. Namamare, Murray. Clips the pass into the corner. The drive of the baseline up and under, no good. Scramble for the rebound and Murray looked like he got the last touch. So it will be Matero Magic basketball. A little bit of frustration there on the end of Murray. Feeling as though he got fouled as we see the replay there of that throwdown. There's no prettier play than the alley -oop. And a nice way to start the 2023 Elite 16 campaign. We're tied at four. Kinda. Passes out. Piri. Got it tightly by Numamade. Ndoy has been busy. Ndoy turns, fires, has to get the shot up. Gets it up just in time. Gets the rebound back. Drops off. Kandulu. Had position, but there were three defenders around him. If you look at the way this Debera team is playing their defense cue, though, they seem content to let the outside shots from the Material Magic come and are really doing a good job to contest the paint really hard on every possession. They are a great zone team and it's very difficult to break it down. The shot comes from the long corner, doesn't go. Kandulu cleans up again. It's time to drive in and a hand on Nguambe. Gets the last touch on that drive from Kainda. They'll try and set something up. Tight. This so far. Foot on it from Murray. And you can see a De Bear just looking to pack the paint to their queue and allow nothing inside for this Matera Magic team. The another spike and the poster count continues to go up here in this one the throw up and this time it's doy <laughs> boy oh boy we talked about the bear trying to pack the paint matera magic is not having any of it finding a way to throw it down well the foul call as well and it gives Ndoy a chance for a three-point play that time the rebound comes there's one place that shorter teams can't guard and that's in the air Mungawambe drives goes left Mari can't hold on the follow it is controlled by Ubis Terry quick shot in and out Ndoy a big rebound it was a good looking shot from Terry just unfortunate it didn't go down now the baseline drive and there's another foul call Terry's looking at the referee but he'll pick up the foul well, the Matero Magic team have been nice and controlled and they've definitely gone inside trying to exploit those matchups inside this Ferroviario de Beira zone. And this is despite de Beira putting attention on the inside for the defensive end. Kind of goes to ground but gets it away in time. Piri. The drive in. It's no good to try to keep it alive. Now a chance for the Bera on the drive. Perry finesses it with the right hand. Stunning, stunning move from William Perry there. Beautiful move and that's so much skill. Right hand English. Right hand English, the kids will call it jelly. <laughs> but either way, William Perry for the two. And you just get an idea why he's so respected in the different spaces that he goes in. What he lacks up, what he lacks for in size, makes up for in terms of ability. And Will Perry has played basketball out in Portugal, Spain, and Bulgaria, and his numbers were quite impressive in that first season in the Basketball Africa League. It's now 7-6. The drive in, Doy just inside the three and. They're gonna call a, I think they might call a push in the back. Yes, they do. Looks like the referee called the push in the back. The barrier though, were looking for that goal tent, feeling as though um, the ball was touched before it, went, it got thrown down. 
tough inside. It's going to be a long day for Obis. They keep trying to find the matchups to match the size. That's kinda. Murray tries to sky, but it's challenged hard. If the Magic are going to loosen up this DeBera defense, they've got to be able to make shots outside. We saw the first attempt from long range there from Matero Magic. Matero Magic basketball. Kinda in the corner now. He'll fire. Kandulu is back there trying to pick up another defense or another offensive rebound into the hands of Murray. DeBera will control the possession. Pass to the corner. Closed out. The free throw line jumper is finessed by Ubesh, who gets his first two. It's a great spot. Ubesh really likes to find the ball at that spot. He has a great jump shot from there. He can score. And uh, whether it's on the offensive glass or just a short jumper, Perry to Namamade. The Hezi cleaned away. Not this time for Numamade. Numamade did a great job to try and change pace there. But the Matera Magic defenders just meeting him in the air as you see him there. With that slight hesitation. But it was the block that came from Piri. Yeah, Piri just wipes it away. Piri gets Murray a touch now. And that's a foul called on the floor. So, so the, there'll be... No call there. No score, rather, but it will be a call for Debera. Yeah, Makulibai on that, just a overly aggressive, trying to guard that baseline drive. And we see him head to the bench there. Does Makulibai coming in for him is Ngoma. Spoikan Ngoma comes in. Murray still searching for a field goal. Rebound picked up. Murray. Now the shot from Perry. Three. William Perry is not a player you can leave unguarded on that three point line. Shooters need a little time, little space. You cannot give William Perry too much of that. Well, Will Perry, second connection. Well, first connection from downtown. It's the lead up to six. 350 left here in the first quarter. Pass inside again. Doy spins. Call for the travel. It's just the second turnover for the Matera Magic. So on the basis of that turnover, we have our first time out in this one, and Matero Magic trailing Ferroviario de Beira by six, and we have 345 left to play. Just have a look at some of the highlights so far. Uh, Matero Magic have had a little bit of the early going with their dominance inside. And Doi and Kandulu establishing their presence inside the paint. Uh, connection there. And this was Doi matching up with Mari. A beautiful two handed throwdown from Kandulu. But since then, uh, that man, Will Perry, with his eight points to lead all scorers on the floor, three or four from the field. As uh, Ferroviario de Beira hold on to a six-point lead in Doi with four points and two of six shooting. Will Perry and his eight. And we have 3.30 as the game comes back alive. Murray spikes it, but it's just a non-counted bucket. But trying to send a little statement message on that one. Yeah, you can sense, Q, that Murray's just itching to go. You know, he hasn't been able to connect just yet from the floor, still on zero points. And you can see in the way that he's playing, getting a little bit more aggressive um, as the play continues. Up, 
They've had some time, have Ferrovia de Vera to prepare that in the national championships just before this. And they triumphed yet again, overcoming Costa de Sol in uh, that series. And here, another foul called. Perry gets by. The defense forces the foul on Perry. And that was this one in the act of shooting. Perry with a chance to get into double digits. And he really does have license as far as coach Luis Lopez Hernandez is concerned. Ferroviario de Vera. And rightly so, Quinton. He's done so much for this Tabera team and really carries so much of their offensive load, particularly with uh, Jamil Kennedy not making his way back to the team. As we see in the get to 10 points. He's an 81% shooter in the Basketball Africa League and conference play, and you know that he will knock it down at a high percentage. He gets those two. Eight-point game. Piri now at the point guard position. Gandulu drops off the pass. Nice pass. Couldn't finish it that close range. Up and in it goes. And nice work. Ntlalama has just come in. Picks up two. Mari cuts, finishes. Mari will be relieved to finally get on the board here and can hopefully loosen up and, and provide more offense for this Tiberi team. Piri. The pass now again. Inside, they continue to go. Kandulu turns over his right shoulder. That one doesn't go. Rebound picked up. Novella, who's in. Pass off. Defense again, well defended. Mugwambe can't find it. The shot up and in the three-point connection from downtown. It's Chonga Chona finds the long-distance connection. Material Magic will definitely be happy with that. We've spoken about how dominant they've tried to be on the inside, but that should give them a little bit more room being able to hit one from outside. Lovely to get that first connection. Terry attacking again. Another foul call. And the Material Magic Q are in foul trouble now. That is the sixth foul of the quarter. And so from here on out in the last two minutes and 12 seconds of this quarter, I mean of this um, quarter, oh, excuse me, the Debera team will be headed to the free throw line on every foul. Problem with that is you're sending one of the better free throw shooters on the Debera team to the free throw line. And Terry knocks down the first. Yeah, spent his college basketball out in Lenoir Rhine. And like I said, spent some time out in Spain and Portugal, but I certainly found a home at in Mozambique at Ferroviario. Pass inside. Kandulu tries the cross pass. Well read by Murray. Chance for De Beira in transition. Back out he comes. Wide open. No Novella can't find his range. The modern day game, Q. The three point shot considered a part of the fast break. That's the way that it is. Perry gets a hand on as the Matero Magic turn it over again. Starting to go away from them just a little bit. Murray drives and finesses in with a reverse right hand layup. Nice play. Really nice play by Murray to slice through that defense. Two defenders just standing still, not moving their feet well enough to get in front of him. So far, been a pretty good quarter as far as Ferroviario de Beira are concerned there. Switching up the defense a little bit. We see them go into a man. The drive. Chona tries the layup. Kandulu can't hold the rebound. Murray into the final minute of the first. It's time and space, and there's a travel call. Juana just looking at what the defense was offering him and then commits the travel. Yeah, he took a little bit too long to decide there um, in terms of what he wanted to do. And unfortunately, it results in a turnover for Debeira. And it is actually indeed their first turnover of the game. Pass and another hit from downtown as Material Magic looks like they're starting to find their range as a team. This time it's Poiken and Goma. Murray 
can go two for one if they want the drive and there's a bump and that's smart because again gonna send Novella to the free throw line. Somalino Novella gets the defense right behind him, hands straight up and the contact called on that one. Referees have been calling it just a bit tight. They have been calling it tight, but as a player, you've also got to adjust to the way the referees are calling it in a particular game. And we saw Piri there just putting his knees out um, to play defense on that baseline. And so with the way the referees have been calling it, you could have expected that call to be made. That was a first miss from Novella as a 71% so far from the free throw line. This bit of Iario de Beira team and one of two it is. And six of nine, which is 66% as the lead goes up. Seven points. And this should be the final possession of the first quarter. Kinda. Fakes. Puts the flow to rub. Chance on the rebound. Now two seconds. The shot will go up just before the half expires. And it does not go but it's been a pretty impressive performance. Mufuniana getting his first run in there. And our first look at Joel Ndondo, but pretty much a good quarter as far as Federal Biaro de Beira and uh, their ambitions of trying to qualify yet again. Matero Magic got a little bit of work to do. We saw some bright sparks from the perimeter in terms of Chongo and Ngoma. And if they can find a couple more connections from downtown, who knows where this game goes. But at the end of the first quarter, it is Ferroviario de Beira 21, Matera Magic 14. And looking at some of those first quarter stats, De Bear with six from inside, one from outside. Material Magic managing to connect from deep uh, after a slow start. They've made two from the three point line and four from inside. Free throws. Favera De Bear making six free throws in that quarter. Well, we are busy joined by some esteemed guests here today at the Ellis Parker Indoor Arena. And with me, I do have the pleasure of being joined by the Zambian Basketball Association president, that is Mr. Zico Maziko Piri. Thank you so much for joining me, sir. Thank you for <laughs> Well, uh, let's talk about your reason for being here is obviously to support Matero Magic, who are currently in action right now and are trailing behind. What did you make of that first quarter? Well, I believe, uh, you know, uh, first things first, we are here to enjoy basketball. And, uh, and uh, because uh, uh, we, we, we try as much as possible to compete at the highest level, and the first quarter was a little bit more shaky, you know, because of the preparations, we're not on sport. But uh, I think we're going to catch up. We are only seven points down, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up. We have the momentum. Yeah. Let's talk about the state of basketball in your country and some of the programs that you guys have in store for the people back in Zambia. Well, thank you so much. Well, we have an active league in Zambia. Actually, what we do is uh, we have uh, regional leagues going on, different regional leagues, and then at the end of the year, we do get all the championships to play together in a, in a national championship. So we have an active league, and uh, there's quite a, a number of, uh, of teams participating in the league. But also, we, we cannot ignore um, basketball development. So what we've done is put together now a new basketball pathways uh, from kids to, 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 to professional basketball, not really professional, but to, to the highest level. And then we have basketball hub sites, which we have enrolled out in the community so that people can have more people to participate in playing basketball. Well, thank you so much. I know that uh, we're here to watch the game and the second quarter is underway. 23-14 is the current scoreline. Let's take a look. Well, great interview there with the Zambian Basketball Federation President, Maziko Piri. And you can hear how much pride there is in the program as we get back underway as Ferroviario de Beira holding on to their largest lead of the game with nine points. Got 9.09 left to play here in the second quarter. It's been a good start to the second quarter for de Beira. Well, only one player in double figures, mate. That's uh, Will Perry with his 12 points. has been a mark of efficiency. The pass in and beautiful play on the drop-off. And that is 
signature to the Viario de Beira play, creating the easy score for Mutakate. And they're gonna be happy to be able to make this run while William Perry is on the is on the bench for them. Well, that is actually Malale who's picking up his first two. This is a different look for the Viario team. The pass came in and there was a last touch from Ebeira. Chona leans in and just buys a call before the shot clock expires. First team foul. Sorry, second team foul. It is the second team foul indeed in this quarter. As we see the bearer they continuing to play that 2-3 zone defense. They have switched up defenses a couple of times, but that's a beautiful backdoor cut and pass and the easy finish for Harrison Kofunga. Some pressure. Murray. Looked like he got away with the travel and that floats it up. It will rim out. Now, the drive. Kainda gets swiped away with the stain on that one. Kainda, though, did a fantastic job to get that ball down the floor out in transition, forcing that Debeira defense to collapse on him. Some great timing, some good defense. Protecting the paint on that one. Kainda into the corner. Chona. Chona steps in between the two defenders. The shot is short. The rebound by Mofonyana is pressured. The hands of Novella. Now, shots inside. The pass comes back out. Some ball move with Malale to Mari. Mari, the drop off pass gets the defender in the air. And that was Novella. Almost went down to the player. Yeah, Novella there with a little bit of a veteran move, just with the fake. And that defender goes flying up over his head. Captain, now for this Ferroviario de Beira squad, Ermelindo Novella gets it, is wide open. He had time and space, he just couldn't convert, but they do get the rebound back. And there's another foul call. Quick calls here. Yeah, Kainda, they're just overzealous um, on that possession. And so Matera Magic have got to be careful with their foul situation. They don't want to continue to send Debera to the free throw line. Yeah, so far, six offensive rebounds for this Ferroviario Debera team. Novella drives in, kicks out. The long range shot by Mfonyana just won't go. And outside of William Perry, this team not finding very much joy from downtown. And that's a beautiful turn by Ndoy as he turned. And I think wrong decision as the Magic aware on the defensive end. Turnover to Novella, another ball into the corner. Turn around, jumper, Vonko. There's great work on the inside. Athletic work by Spoika and Goma. No, that is Ndalama. Yeah, you have to love that fight from Ndalama as you see him go all the way after that ball and try and put it back up. Great hustle and fight inside the paint. And that foul. And it was back-to-back -back hustle plays. Kainda did a great job on this end of the floor um, to be able to come up with that steal. And then on the other end, to see the second chance opportunity and how aggressively they went after it. Sends it to the free throw line and they continue to struggle through the magic. That'll make it one of six. And it's tough, Q, to chip away at a lead when you are not able to convert from the charity stripe. It's five missed points for the Magic. Perry. Tight 
control. Now the pass in as Joel Ndondo just brings some of his size into the painted area, but the pass doesn't go to hand. So that's a turnover. That is turnover number six for Debeira. I still like, though, that he's able to get that position and seal on the inside to give them options there. Gainda. A little short jumper falls and nice read by Obert Musango as he finds his touch just inside the key. Inside the three-point line. Perry drops off to Murray. Murray cleared away. Stunning inside defense there from the Material Magic to come up with that block. A heat check quickly from Musonga. And that one rims out. Now a chance for the Pera again. And that one is cleared away with authority. Material Magic with the basketball. Ndalama got all the way up to meet that one on the glass. Back and forth we go. A little bit scrappy on the offensive end. Murray turns in, can't get the finish. Three defenders around him, makes the pass out. Ndondo will try the free throw line jumper. And there's some control now. Maybe a sense of calm might come. But the magic again. The lob up. And there's an easy one for Fallo and Dory. Ndalama seems to be laboring on the other end of the floor. Seems to have maybe taken some impact there. But great back-to-back -back defensive plays by him. Perry drives in, kicks out. Now the wide open shot. Look good out of the hand, but it just rims out. And you called it and Ndalama just uh, defensive play overexerted himself a little bit too much. And referee just uh, going over to check if Ndalama wants to sub and He's going to have to take a break. And you can see he's, he's not entirely happy, but he has provided his team just a little bit of a spark on the defensive end. It's important when you come in with energy as you look and see that sky wipe away. And he had a couple of choice words for Murray, but uh, he looks like he came away in the worst for wear. He has definitely given a gallant effort on the defensive end as we see the back-to-back -back replays of blocks that he's gotten up at. And in the possessions where he's not blocking the ball, he's really getting right up in front of the offensive player and making sure he's altering shots. Yeah, he's used all of that length and all of that frame to play the role of paint protector and he has done it pretty well. Still, the Matero Magic trail by seven we have 331 left in the second quarter the magic trying to fight back corner jumper is short as Gandulu comes back in out of the timeout and Kainda can't keep alive, so it is Ferriario de Beira basketball. Ishmael Numamare. Numamare is another player, Q, who has been a consistent um, in this Ferriero de Beira team. Was the captain in the Division East. Or rather, the standout player in their division is Baptista, was the captain last year. And there's Kandulu cleaning up. And there is another call. Numa Monday in the 2022 edition of the Basketball Africa League, averaging 9.2 points a game, 2.4 rebounds, and two assists. When the Debeira offense is clicking well, he can slash. He likes to get out in the open floor, but can also knock down the three ball, yeah, especially within the flow of the offense. A really versatile guard who gets it done for his team. And just a little break in play as the moisture on the floor 
a concern and that's always safety first as far as players on the floor matter are we ready to get back underway this is Ellis Park Arena situated in downtown Johannesburg here yeah. the last event hosted here was the NBA Africa game and now it's the chance for the Southern Hemisphere teams to shine in some of the Basketball Africa League qualifiers, the Elite 16, got teams from all over the continent coming to state their case for the three remaining places in the road to the Basketball Africa League. And just as this game is a battle, we expect every single one of the games throughout this week to be tightly contested as each one of these teams look to try and qualify for that very prestigious competition. Well, it looks like the instant replay has been triggered, and it's a it's a look at the the last the last foul going to be looked at. And uh, here we go as they try to have a look at that last sequence of play. And I think what, they, what they're trying to establish is whether Ndondo actually made a legitimate attempt at the basketball or if he went at the player. Yeah, as they try and find that moment there for the referees to see if it was an intentional foul or if it was a regular common foul. They, they, they continue to have a look and see. And uh, while we wait for the referees to just get to where they're going, they, they, they continue to search for a moment. And that's, that's the moment right there. Yeah, you see them there to try and see if it was an unsportsmanlike foul or if the player, in fact, went after the ball out in transition. So, so here they go, and they, again, trying to establish if there is a legitimate attempt for the ball or if there was just an unsportsmanlike foul. And it, it's going to be called a blocking foul. It's the fourth team foul of the quarter for the Matera Magic, and so it'll be a side ball. Terry, now that we've had that instant review, hits another one, and he continues to stroke it from downtown. The radar is locked in, and the missiles are sending in on that three-point line as he picks up his third three-pointer it's been an incredible offensive display here by william perry he has 15 first half points perry again drives in tries to drop off comes off the foot of ndondo can't hold the pass and the turnovers starting to pile up just a little bit the eighth bit of yario de Beira turnover Matero Magic basketball and 10 point game. Magic need to try and close out the quarter, staying just under this 10 point barrier. The long range bomb. And not sure about that one. That could be misconstrued as a heat check, but I think a, a poor shot in terms of selection. Yeah, it did seem more like a poor shot selection. Lake. And you're right, they've got to try and get into the second quarter, second half, excuse me, down single digits. Nemamade guarded tightly. He drives in, the floater goes up, wide right. Murray's there to clean up. Another chance for Tabera. Step back three. Murray connects. Nice shot. 
sweet shot there by Murray with the outstretched arm of the defender. Well, the Beira start to light up. That's their fifth three-pointer. Back into their zone they go. It's the largest lead of the game at 13. Double team comes, Kainda. Nice drop-off pass. That's fantastic play. Fantastic play to just pass through the defense they thread the needle to the man right underneath the rim that the weak side forgot to check. Harrison Kafunga picks up the easy two and back at 11. Namamade and that's Murray knocks down another long range bar. Six three pointer here for Ferbiario de Beira. They have certainly gotten hot from the outside have for Vera de Beira as we head into the last 30 seconds of this game. Mid-range jump shot does not go. It's Murray who comes up with the rebound. Out in transition, layup is blown. Hauna not able to make. Underneath the rim, Kandula misses the layup. And now it is de Beira to take the last shot. Nuremande can't connect. Two seconds left. And that will do it. We are at the end of the first half of action here between Favero de Beira out of Mozambique as well as Matero Magic out of Zambia. And the halftime score it is 37 to Favero de Beira and 23 to the Matero Magic. Looking at some of those halftime stats from the three point range, De Beira have hit three from outside, Matero Magic just two. And from the free throw line, it has been six made free throws for De Beira and one for the Matero Magic from inside, evenly matched. Eight two point shots made per side. Having so much fun right here court sites and I'm now joined by Fabrice who's a, a super fan of Urunani but he's been here the entire time. Fabrice, thank you so much for joining us here today. Talk to us about your experience. You've watched all the matches and how proud are you that Urunani won today? Uh, I'm super proud of Urunani because we, we had a good game and we won by a big difference and we are um, waiting to see the second, the, the last game so we can see how is uh, Cape Town Tigers and NBA Academy? Who are you rooting for in this match? Um, NBA Academy. Yeah, I want to see how the youngsters are, are playing. Yeah. So that's the only team you're looking forward to? I mean, there's a match that's taking place right now? Yes. Uh, I also, because um, in semi semi-final, we meet probably one of the, these games, one of these uh, teams. So uh, I'm also here to, to see how, how the level of the, uh, of the teams. And lastly, who's your favorite player? Uh, um, Landry from Ronani, of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Very patriotic individual here today. But that's Fabrice and, of course, a whole lot of other super fans joining us here to witness all the matches. Back to Quinton and the team.
Hey, thank you very much, Nicoletti. Yes, we are courtside here as uh, we continue to build towards the fourth and final game, but we've been treated to some of the best basketball action on the continent. Ferviario De Beira taking on Matero Magic and uh, Quinton Nason alongside Nicolisi Ngonello and Takari Ngobeni. And guys, it, it's, it was a surprising first half, but De Beira picking up right where they left off as far as qualification is concerned. Um, I, I would just like to say, Q, first of all, you know, from the first game um, when we saw uh, Cospian and City Oilers and then the following game, you know, Urunani as, uh, as well as KPA, the, the temperature is slowly building up, you know, and it's getting to a crescendo when we get to the final game. But this game has just been entertaining, man. That first half was just outstanding. And uh, TK, let's talk about the game a bit because, you know, we saw some outstanding play from Will Perry, his 15 points to lead all scorers. Uh, he continues to just uh, build his own legend. I don't understand why you would leave Will Perry after he's been playing in the role to ball in all competitions relating to ball so many times. If you leave that man unguarded on the three-point line, it's going to hit nothing but the bottom of the nylon, accompanied by his new teammate Murray. They are just feeding off each other. One starts you off in the first quarter, which is Will and Perry shooting well, and then Murray is just closing you off with threes towards the end of the second quarter. What we have seen as well has been the, the, the Terror Magic trying to play through their bigs. Ndoy and Kandulu on the inside have, have dominated the rebounds, but they haven't really dominated the scoring. You see 13 offensive rebounds that haven't translated into points. What kind of adjustments do you think they make going into the second half? Well, uh, Q, I find that um, they've been impressive, both uh, Fallon and Doy as well as uh, Douglas Kandulu. Um, they're very raw though, you know, so this is probably their first taste playing at this level. So still very raw, they still need to refine their skills, they need to work on their low post scoring, they need to work on other things as well in the low post, passing in the post, you know, finishing, footwork and, and, and all of, maybe those are the things they need to work on, but then also, you know, working together with the guards, getting some things in play. Uh, in contrast to, uh, to what uh, the uh, Ferroviario have been doing, it's been uh, it's been totally different. Since we're talking about contrast, it's that three-point line that seems to be a difference. The five threes from the outside really a factor. Five threes from the outside, that's Murray and Perry just teaming up to just kind of uh, adjust a sniper scope and hit nothing but nylon from, from the three-point range. And the beauty is it is within the settings, it is within the motion. They're looking to dump it inside. If not, the bigs dump it outside and Murray and Perry just hit nothing but net. Well, another thing that stands out, and, and we have to talk about it, because you guys both mentioned it on air in our previous games, is that the free throw line. And right now, the Matero Magic leaving points on the floor as far as the attempts of the free throw line. They're not getting there enough, but also struggling to convert. If you're going to play big boy basketball, you need to be able to shoot your free throws. On the side of Ferrer de Beira, you've got Ubi you've got Murray, you've got Ndondo, who are very formidable. So they're going to be physical, and you need to be able to finish on them, one. If not, if they foul you, finish on the free throw line and be able to convert. Well, if we're going into the second half now, let's hypothetic. Let's do some hypotheticals. You, there's not too much you need to do as coach of Ferroviario de Beira, but let's go ahead and go. You are the coach of Ferroviario de Beira. What do you do? Well, um, Michael Murray started cold and then started cooking towards the end of the first quarter, carried that over into the second quarter. So you both want you want both Murray and Perry to just continue being consistent, adding points on the board for their team. And then the big guys just need to score, rebound the ball, and also be able to make plays out of the low post. And Ellis Park Arena has been the venue for our competition so far as we have a look at the results on day one. The City Oilers, an emphatic performance to pick up a win over the club Omni Sports Police National Cuspin, 71-59. Urunani, we can even say and re-emphasize impressive performance because that was almost a wire-to-wire -wire win over the Dockers Kenya Ports Authority. And of course, we are seeing our third game, Ferroviario de Beira and Matero Magic. Ferroviario de Beira holding on to their biggest lead of the game at 15 po 14 points. Points, and uh, Matero Magic have got a bit of work to do. They're still looking for their first win in this competition. And of course, we're going to close out with the host, the Cape Town Tigers, taking on the NBA Academy. And that should be another fantastic one. And now I get, let's get a closing thought before we go into the half. I asked Nko about, uh, about uh, Ferroviario de Beira Takani. you got to give me a little bit of insight in terms of Matero Magic. What adjustments can you make? Uh, Chonachongo needs to play well. Kundula 
also needs to come and invite himself into the game. He's being very passive, needs to be a little bit more aggressive. And then you need Ndalama, who came off in the second quarter, blocking shots, being yeah. aggressive. So you need the bigs, which is Ndalama, Ndoyo, and Kondula, to be very formidable against the, the front court, which is fair to better. So they need to uh, accept and play in the big moment. That is the road to ball. If you want to be a big dog, you got to play on the big stage. Well, the message is clear from the analysts. Big dogs have got to step up on the big stage. The pressure has got to build diamonds. So for the magic, can they cast some magic spells to change this outcome? The train, the locomotives, the Ferroviario de Bear will just keep on their track. We will find out in the second half what this looks like. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more second half action. We've, we've prepared quite um, efficiently. We're quite energetic about what, what, is, what is in front of us and what we want to do. We understand it's not going to be an easy road. The brand of basketball that we're playing is very exciting. It's good for the eye, you know. So every single time they come out here to come watch us, they'll walk away knowing for a fact that they got their, they got their money's worth. I mean, we're under no illusion as to what's going to happen here. Guys are going to come out swinging. There's no question about it. But we're ready for that. My team is Kenya Post Authority. You're coming from Mombasa, uh, that is in Kenya. I'm happy with the preparation. Uh, we've almost done everything as a coach. I prepare my team well. Uh, the remaining part is for players to do their thing. The importance of the tournament uh, is to give exposure and experience to the players. Uh, it's, their, it's their platform. So it's for them to showcase their talent, skills, and everything. Tero Magic is from Zambia, Lusaka. Very big tournament indeed. Uh, we didn't do very well in the qualifiers. We never had the players that we wanted to come with in the first place when we went to Tanzania. Joburg is different now. We've got a few players that we want, and uh, I think we expect different results this time around. We are a family and we enjoy a lot to spend time uh, together. That is the key for us. Enjoy and do our best. That is our goal every day. We finish uh, champions in the Elite 16 and that is very good for us because it was a great time for us. Hopefully we can have uh, the same feeling again. So the team has been preparing for this opportunity for over a year now. Hostian has gone through several stages of tournaments to uh, be ready for this Elite 16 tournament. Just to uh, name a few, they went to the uh, Road to Ball qualifiers in Madagascar. In Madagascar as well, they had uh, several tournaments that uh, prepared them for this opportunity. So they are ready uh, to compete and uh, we'll see what happens. First, we have to believe that we want to be in the ball. Uganda basketball has been you know, progressing. We've been playing in uh, World Cup qualifiers. We've been playing in Afro Basket Championship. Uh, so if we have a club coming from Uganda represented in ball, uh, it really reflects on the basketball program back at home. We are happy to be here to represent our country and um, hoping that uh, we are going to go all the way. The NBA Academy Africa, you know, it's a group of young kids from all around the continent. It means that Africa is working together, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Our mentality has always been to win or we learn, and this it's very important for this group of young guys uh, as we are a development program. We are very excited uh, to come and be and uh, participate to this uh, unbelievable tournament. Half time here at the beautiful, picturesque Ellis Park Arena. You look at the backdrop of the City of Gold, and it is Ferroviario de Beira 37, Batero Magic 23. It's been fascinating to watch the diff different teams try to figure out the schemes in order to try and break down the defense. And uh, yes, we've been treated to some great basketball action. The best in the Southern Hemisphere, without a doubt, has 
these eight teams compete for the right to pick up the three available spots left in the 2023 Basketball Africa League. And here are the hosts who are in the building, the Cape Town Tigers, as they look locked in and ready. There is stoicism on that team as they get ready for their encounter, which will take on, which will happen a little bit later against NBA Africa Academy and Mpumi. That really does look like a team that's locked in. They do indeed, as we see the faces of some of the Tigers there. Captain Prita Prince do in the frame, talking to assistant coach Ndunja. And Ndoy has been very active on the glass, has been one of the standout players for this Matero Magic team as uh, his three of eight to go along with seven points. He leads all the scoring for Matero Magic. He's also picked up six rebounds and he will have to just try and increase that efficiency in the second half if his team is going to hope to have a say. Yeah, if his team is going to chip away at this lead, it's going to be him who has to shoulder the bulk of the responsibility on the scoring end as he has done because on the other end, Quentin Denason, it is William Perry who has been phenomenal for this DeBera team. He already has 15 points in the first half, along with six rebounds and two assists. And what's impressive, he is five for five, 100% from the free throw line. I used to call uh, Jamal Kennedy Mr. Efficiency, and I think William Perry trying to pick up that mantelpiece because he's made some good decisions with ball in hand. He does try to push the pace and the tempo and highly efficient shooter if left unguarded as uh, we get closer and closer in this Cospin coaching staff just here and uh, part of that team they are also courtside taking in some of this action and we are finally set and ready for the third quarter and uh, picturesque urban city of Johannesburg plays host once again we've uh, had the privilege of hosting this event three times in three different venues Wembley Arena the first one and that competition Ferroviario de Maputo here and uh, Ferroviario de Berra out in Soweto to qualify the last time out and here they are in the Ellis Park Arena and the pass to Mario on the inside as the offensive foul called as the elbow from Murray just uh, comes out and the referee there to interpret that as a, a little bit of a chicken wing. Yeah, that is, that's what we call it, Q, a chicken wing, as uh, an offensive player wraps his elbow around the other. Not very happy uh, about that call, Murray, at all. And this shifting defense from the bear has been causing some problems. Doy, the, the help comes, he holds up this time, the extra pass. Kahinda is open, he shorts it. There's a battle for the board, Murray's gonna control. Got two on him. Kafunga right there. Now Murray again, call for the travel. That's two quick turnovers for Murray. As he was beginning to get a rhythm, he ended that first half with 10 points, Q, along with five rebounds. The one-two punch right now, uh, Murray alongside Perry. Though their three-point shooting percentage at 41, they've only shot the ball at 29% on the interior. And it's something that shows that Matero Magic are not easy to just score on inside that painted area and inside the key. Matero Magic definitely a long and athletic team that make it difficult on the inside. Kandulu in front of the defense and that is his second field goal. And again, it's that same length that makes it difficult to score on them on the inside that gives them the easy second chance opportunities on the offensive end. Same length that forces the turnover as Kandulu does just enough to force the pass out of bounds looking for Elton Obish on that one. That's turnover number 10 for De Beira. 12 point game. Kainda. Kick out to Kainda. Kainda. Little jab step. Pocket pass for the corner three. Doesn't go. The rebound picked up by Mongoambe. And that's back to back three point attempts 
uh, by the material magic, he can get a sense that they're trying to get going from out there to chip away at this lead. Well, it will make sense. The nice drop of pass into the pocket and the easy two for Ubej. Great execution on that one. The baseline shot comes quickly. Kanduru skies excellent work and he can't get the little putback opportunity. Ubej is there to pick up the rebound and control possession for the bearer. Here we go again. The bearer. Ubish speeds the length of Kandulu just too much. Kandulu changing shots on the defensive end of the floor and offensively going after those rebounds. He has now has five offensive rebounds and eight in total. Ndoy double teamed. And a last touch ruled from Ferroviario de Beira. The query comes from Mugwambe, but the referee's already made the call here. Yeah, nice double team, Murray and Mugwambe come. And fair enough call, I think, from referee. Shut up. Murray controls again for another rebound. That's his fourth. Shut up and uh, good, easy finish. Yeah, Hauna doing a good job there as the ball was almost lost out of bounds to secure it and make that two points. Wanna Kandulu trying to work on Murray. There's another foul pickup. Second foul on, on Murray. And at this point, they got to try and get a buy a bucket and maybe a case for a little bit of contact from Kandulu's side. And, and Murray is, is playing undersized in that position right now and doing a pretty good job. Yeah, considering the size differential between him and Kandulu, he's definitely doing a good job to keep him off the block and make sure he's catching in uncomfortable positions and not allow him to just easily get to the bucket. You can feel the frustration from Kandulu as his struggles from the free throw line continue. One of four. Make that one of five as an empty trip makes it really, really tough to chip away at a lead when you cannot make free throws. Perry, short baseline jumper. Uh, the scoring continues. A little bit of Perry sauce. They've got to find him. They've got to locate him on the defensive end. He cannot get that much space to make jump shots. Screen for the open shot. Shot is long, but Cantillo is there again. And continues to try to force up the second chance opportunities and uh, picks up the foul call so right place in that it's the length and the wingspan Perry caught there and uh, you could call the foul on either Murray or Perry at that point you have to enjoy how Kandulu just gets off to that offensive glass and he has now managed to get six offensive rebounds Post comes in. Kandulu tries to drop off as well. Red. Nomamade back in. Passes into space. The hang. The, try to look for the fancy reverse. And yeah, Mungawambe. He had some athleticism. He had the hang time, just couldn't get the finish. He did have the hang time as you see him there go up against Ndalama. And then chase down the ball once again. Referee though calls it a travel. But well, nice to see Ndalama back on the floor. Looked like he had a niggle and looks like he's over whatever that was. Now uh, another break in play. Referee Picardo just uh, gonna go across to the table. He's receiving clarity. And uh, table and referees are aligned so we can get play back underway kinda got it by Numamade Lalama now kinda's looking for his shot and he finds it finally that was a good offensive possession from the material magic just rotating the ball and finding the open man well Perry gets Stripped by Kainda and then able to draw the foul. That is 
excellent hustle play by Augustin Kainda. Had a struggle throughout that first half. Was 0 for 7 from the field. Could not find his range. But uh, has come alive just a little bit. And shooters stay shooting is what they say, Ms. Ramatsoha. Absolutely. Shooters got to shoot, Q. And, you know, eventually it does fall most of the time for shooters. And so you can't continue to leave them open just because they haven't made it. Because you don't know when they're going to get hot. All you need to do is see it go through the net once. Kainda. Now there's a call. And I think the violation is going to be on... Uh, it will be on Mofoana. So it is another chance for Augustine Kainda. He shorts it again, but there... Kandulu on the rebound, trying to keep it alive. Gets the rebound, but misses the finish again. There's Murray. Kandulu definitely did well to locate that rebound, but unfortunate not to make. Murray tries to hang and coming across again to try and block. And never mind the defense on the floor, but you just see the effort from Ndalama. There's Chongo and Sky to protect the rim in Dalama, and I think the foul comes on Chongo, so it'll send Murray to the free throw line. The effort from Dalama was admirable as he came across from the weak side. It looks like he only, has, he only knows one way to play, and that's just straight hard. It's zero to 100, there is no 50-50. Murray misses on that one. Absolutely goes at every single possession at 100%, and you love players like that as a coach. Empty trip, and the referee's looking for a ruling, and it's good. The hold comes on white 44, and that is Chirumafa Mofonyana. Going to be two shots on that. Interesting period in the game right now. It's a, a chance where Matero Magic can make enough inroads to see some momentum, but also they were in danger of letting the game slip. So each possession, especially during this tricky time, very important. Yeah, it really is. And the way that they have missed opportunities to chip away at this lead has been right there at the charity stripe. You know, they've really struggled throughout the day from there. Murray, nice drop of pass. Cleaned away quite easily in that shot attempt. Lazy by Uwis, and it shows great material magic defense. Now they have numbers. Lalama. The pass into the corner now. It's Chongo who goes with the runner on the layup. The long rebound comes out to him. He'll try the short jumper, won't fall again. And that is the other place, Q, where they have missed out on chipping away at that lead. Just second chance opportunities. They've gotten so many of these offensive rebounds in the possessions we've seen, and yet they have not been able to make the second chance opportunities. Yeah, it's been a very big factor in, in, in this game. And we've seen the play of Douglas Kandulu, and it's been quite outstanding. And second chance points really skewed in the way of Ferroviario de Bear with the 12 alongside of the eight. And it really shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't at all. Kandulu has gotten some fantastic rebounds underneath the rim, but just have not been able to make. Bera basketball. No, Mamade. Perry. Gone a little bit quiet. Murray. Might have been a treble. He gets by in the defense, though. I'm going to beat Bera basketball. Nice little hesitation there from Murray to beat his defender on the baseline and make it all the way to the rim. 20 offensive rebounds 
it has been for this material magic team perry around the screen perry will fire front eye nice 12 rebound for kandulu here a chance in the open floor for my for the magic doesn't go and goma loses the ball on the attempted hero good job there by perry to just put himself between um the man and the basket and deter that layup there you see the look on spoika and goma's face he's determined to keep perry out of this one he's only scored two points in the third quarter but they have spread the scoring just a little bit for Viario de Beira. Perry. Again, by the screen, drops off the pass to a wide open shooter. The shot goes up and in, and that is finished from the three point line. Mungoambe takes his total to 10. Great job by Perry to get that ball to him in the corner, coming off the drive. Back inside, the magic go, and that's physical, no doubt. And Dondo, a bigger bodied Ferroviario, the Barbera player. Doy trying to move him, can't really. And then nice footwork to force the foul out of Ndondo. It's a good adjustment there by coach. We spoke about it a little earlier. You had Jamel Murray down in the bottom there. <laughs> Excuse me, Michael Murray down in the place there, guarding. Um, as undersized in the middle, but now going to Ndondo to kind of contest against the big man. Joel Ndondo obviously comes into this one to try and add some size, and it's always the pickup as far as Ferroviario de Beira are concerned. They look for bigs that can help them within their system, but they've got to be mobile and got to be able to provide some rebounding and free throw falls for Ndoy and the score. 47-31. Offensive foul. Just off the ball and on the screen, and you can see <laughs> there's so much conversation between coaches, players, and referees. And back and forth, we continue to go. Still that tricky period. Long range shot, goes up and in. They, uh, they have a chance here to gain some momentum off that three point shot. Piri finding the touch from downtown as uh, the magic start to go on a surge. Piri is Namamade. The source almost filled him, but he gets the pass away. The shot, the rim shot. Doesn't go. Material Magic unfortunate not to come away with the ball there. They did a great job to play 10 seconds of really good defense on this Debeira team. It is Debeira basketball. 255 is what remains here. Ndondo sets the pick for Perry. Back inside they go. And there in Lalama just uh, gonna get whistled for the foul. Yeah, he came in there just a little too fast, a little too furious, and he picks up the foul. The benefit of size inside the paint. It's been a different story since Ndondo's been on the floor. He hasn't really provided much scoring, but that presence makes a difference on the defensive end. Murray, challenged by Chongo, unnecessary foul. The contact right then and there. Some uh, no love lost between Murray and Chongo. Hard knock from Chongo and Murray. <laughs> and Murray, they're just not happy with that. Murray has not had a good day so far at the free throw line. This one, though, is a sideline out of bounds. Rebound picked up nicely by Piri. Piri hit one from there earlier. Try another. Shorts that, and there's a push. And uh, Ndondo right there in the thick of the contact and that's a very frustrated you see him looking great position by Ndoy and he forces the push right there from Ndoy he scored in no man's land once you caught behind the defense once you've caught in front of the defense they can do 
very little, especially with the size of Ndoy. It's definitely tough to keep Ndoy off the glass. It's been a frustrating day at the free throw line for the Materia Magic. They are just five of 16, four of 16, excuse me, at 26%. Can't win too many games, missing that many from the charity stipe. Another miss, and last touch comes from the Magic. Doi. The Matera Magic trying to put a little bit of pressure on this DeBera team to try and get this lead into the single digits before they head into the fourth. I think it's a, a smart move with just 228 left. They, they have to try and put some pressure, you know, see if they can't speed up the possessions, but there's a lot of contact there. And Spoika Ngoma commits the foul, and he's going to keep trying to put pressure on Perry. And that's the danger here, Q that trying to put pressure on it may mean they pick up a few more fouls before the end of this quarter. Mugwambe drives, across the paint, drops in to Ndondo. A cross-court pass is picked off by Chongo. The pass into Ndoy and into his stride he goes, forces the foul. And I think it's the pain stripe as far as Matero Magic are concerned because four of 17 at 23% it's something that they will have a conversation about. But they, they call it on the ground, so it's not going to be the free throw line. Doi. The pass. The Lama. Looked like there was just enough defense on that. Now Nimamade. It passes to Perry in space, and that's an easy two. Easy two for Perry coming off of that increased interior defensive presence that DeBera has instituted here in the third quarter. 49 plays 34 now, 136 left. The long range shot goes up and in again. They are stepping just about a meter back from the three-point line and they are knocking it down this Matero Magic team. That time it's Poika and Ngoma. It was a timely shot from Ngoma as Matera Magic really needed a bucket to keep it close. Namamade drops off to Murray. Murray, the extra pass, the floater, touched. Nice defense. Namamade shorts it, and there's contact on the ground. The referee's right there to make the call. There's lots of physicality happening inside of that paint. Plenty of physicality, and we saw it there. You know, no love lost between these two teams. Both of them really want this win. This time, though, it does send Debera to the free throw line. And Ndondo there to shoot, too. Foul trouble starting to become a factor in this one. Foyana sitting on four fouls. Ndondo there, he's at the free throw line. And then before that Ndondo miss, Debeira scoring 63% from the free throw line. Ubej sitting on four fouls as well. And he gets one of two. Take the lead back up to 13. We have one of three left. Final 60 seconds. The long range shot. Definitely a ploy from Matero Magic. Trying to stretch this 2 3 defense out. The drop off. The Mamare. There's a hand on it. Terry to the corner. Ngoma off the dribble and Terry there to pick up the rebound. Passes to Murray. Edu, Ishmael, and Mamade. They will try and control. Could have gone two for one, but it looks like they're going to be happy to just go deep into the shot clock. The pass to Mamade. That was terribly out of the hand. And now a pass to Chongo, who 
get two and bring it back within 11. That might just be the small little bit of momentum that the Magic need to spark them in the fourth to drive by. And guess who's there to help on the defensive end in Tlalama. Might be a case for goaltending, but the referees are happy to call it legal. And when you look at the replay, that's definitely a goaltend. I'm not so sure about that cue. I feel like it could have been clean. <laughs> well, we have a look at the score at the end of the third quarter. Ferriario de Beira 50, Matero Magic 39. And we still have 10 minutes of some great road to BAL action coming to you from Ellis Park Arena in Johannesburg. And that is 10 more minutes before uh, we get to the end of this one. Well, I'm chilling with Sowetans here, so I'm very happy because I myself am a Sowetan, but I am joined by a coach of the Soweto Academy, that is a coach Monabisi, as well as Bonte, who is the junior NBA Johannesburg uh, um, player, that is. Uh, but uh, coach, uh, why did you feel the need to bring your team here today? So basically, this is where the very best of the best in Africa are playing, and uh, that's where we are trying to get to. So our kids need to see where they are trying to get to and the kind of players they'd want to emulate so this is where we really really need to be so this is the kind of stage that we want our players to get to and Bonte, as an mvp what does this experience mean to you to see all these players right here live um, it gives me a great opportunity to learn more and yeah, get much more experience who are you supporting uh, perry <laughs> Well, that's all for now, but uh, there's still lots in store for us as we do gear up for the last quarter. But I will throw over to Quentin, Sakane and Nkolisi for some analysis. Looking at the half-time stats, 2.10 for Matera Magic 2 on the outside. Looking at the three-point shooting, DeBear have made six and Matera Magic just five. Just a brief stats breakdown before we get into this fourth and final quarter. Yes, the three-point line has been an interesting watch indeed. Six of 16 so far. That Fitzmaier Viario de Bera, five of 20 for Matero Magic, who are shooting it at 25%. And into the fourth and final quarter, a win vital for any one of these teams. And Ndralama from point-blank range blows the close-range shot. Murray not going to get up from that. He's gone to ground hard and that's why we have the the break in play yeah Murray's gone to the floor seems to be in some pain it is very physical in there and then inadvertent head to chin collision and uh, that can be very painful yeah he took that contact with Ndalama Looks like Mario Ball head to the bench. Well, this will be an interesting period. Murray has seen very little rest because of his presence on the floor. And he's played 29 minutes of the 30 minutes available. And he'll get it for his first breather forced. Nonetheless, Novella back in a little bit of a cushion to play with that he can go to the bench right now and there's a scramble for novella fakes is wide open and the shot rims off left cleaned up by Ntalama. you know earlier on in this game we talked about how close the referees were calling it and now they seem to just be letting us play and that's going to be called interference and uh, goaltending as Kanduru try to tip that in but the referee right there to make the call. Well, coming into the third, Will Perry still leads all scorers with his 19 points. It was interesting to hear the insights from the young fan in the house talking about coming out here to watch Will Perry. So he's got fans just about everywhere. Novella can't find Murray Skies going right into the chest of Kandulu and maybe just a little bit more intent now. He wants to send a strong message in the paint. Looks like he certainly wants to send a strong message here. He spoke a little bit about Will Perry and having 
some fans out here in South Africa. He, of course, had a little bit of a short stint at the end of the season last year with the phenomenal Phenoms here in South Africa playing at the Ashraf Ludwig Memorial Tournament. Yeah, they came away champions, and he was the MVP in that. And uh, it sure has endeared himself to some of the local fan base. And there's Murray, one of two on the trip. Takes his total to 11. Struggled from the field. It's 28% on the interior. Back into their customary zone is Ferviario de Bera. The Lama can't hold the pass. The lob pass comes and it's taken away. Let's see some sloppy passing there from the Matera Magic. Really just playing into the hands of Ferriviario de Bera. Now Perry to Murray. Mungoambe sees Murray on the back door, can't hold the pass. Two defenders around him, kicks back out. The extra pass, Perry in the corner, short. Chongo did well on the defensive end to challenge the shot, and now he's got the ball out in the open floor. It goes up, and they count to the continuation. Two more to the total. And that's the energy you need from the Matera Magic if they are going to come back into this game. And really, it was a sequence. Chongo came out to contest the Perry shot and now gets in between the Beira defense for the finish. Chance to bring it back into single digits on the make. Converts the three-point play. It's been a while since we've seen this lead down two single digits. And so Matera Magic with a little bit of momentum now. Seven points for Chongo Chana. Go alongside his five rebounds. Perry floats it up over the defense, and that's a tough take. Probably the wrong read, the chance for Matero. They can't convert that transition opportunity. Spoikan Goma goes to ground and was impeded on the pass. Looks around. I think he wants his teammates to come and help him up, but Mungoambe gets a hand on. And timely hand, they had numbers. But also, they'll take the fouls. You know, there are a couple of these Dabera pairs that are flirting with that four foul mark. Right now, they have two already with four fouls. And so, Matera Magic will be happy to collect every foul they can. Mungoambe and Ubis, the two players on four fouls. Inside they go, Kandulu turns, short jumper, rattles in and out. Poor control now by Debera. They will steady each possession. They will try and get value for each one of these offenses they get. As we see them, they run several dribble handoffs. Four seconds on the shot clock. Perry calls for he's going to have to pull from way downtown. He shorts it. Novella chases down, can't hold, Kandulu controls. It's been a stalwart, at least on the boards inside the paint. The drop off pass to the corner. Kandulu is there and this time finishes. Much better job from Kandulu there to finish those putbacks. And with that second chance opportunity, they have now brought the deficit all the way down to seven. 14 rebounds, seven of them offensive. Make that 15 on the contest. Chona into the defense, and that's a legal challenge. Novella, a little bit of pressure now for Ferroviario de Beira. Across to Murray. Momentum starting to swing the way of the magic. It has been indeed the magic to take momentum here in the fourth quarter. Murray tries the long range shot, it doesn't go into the hands of Ngoma. He's going to slow down the play just a little bit. So Piri, cross. Piri inside. Now spreading the zone. Chono in and out. And there's another great rebound. And Ntalama puts some muscle on it as he scores that. And a chance here for another three-point play. And the Matera Magic can begin to feel this lead within their reach right now. 
skying right there in La Lama over the two Beira defenders and you just see the difference in athleticism and length and they are working hard starting to see some belief from the magic a timeout called here on the floor as a Ferviario de Beira little bit rattled here in this fourth quarter as we head into the final five minutes Ferviario de Beira starting to assess the situation here as they have led by as much as 18. This biggest scoring run was 10, but this is Matero Magic showing the fight that the size of the fight that's within the dog right now as they fight their way back. And they hold all the keys and all the momentum just out of this timeout. The Magic trying to rebound their way back into it. Second chance opportunities have been crucial here in the second half and Mutlalama's energy has been outstanding off the bench. Couldn't convert the three-point play. Five-point game. And that is the problem, Q. They just have not been good from the free throw line. Currently scoring just 27% from the charity stripe. No, Mamade. Trying to drop off to Murray. Murray gets it back. The nice extra pass. Now, Numamade loses the handle. Another turnover. A chance for the Magic out in the open floor. Only Perry to beat. Goes left hand. That's a beautiful finish from Makulabai. And Q, we have ourselves a game. There's just five minutes left and we have a three-point game. Back come the Magic. Hold on to your hats. Now, Perry. Nimamade will try. Short, the long range of Tim Gandulu skies again, and that's rebound number 16. It has been an uncharacteristically poor offensive game from Numamande throughout the day. He is 0 for 7 from the floor and is yet to score. It has been a struggle for him indeed, and there's a drop of pass. The Lama trying to find Gandulu. Timely interception. One possession game. Perry. Now, shot from the three point line. It won't go for Mofanyana. With three points separating these two teams, that felt like poor shot selection. Felt like a, a rush shot, and we haven't seen too many of those. And that's what pressure can do. Kandulu talking about pressure, can't hold that pass. 11th magic turnover. Terry. Goma cutting him. Terry steps through. What a finesse finish. And that is exactly what you can expect, Ki. Will Perry to take over this game for Debeira. Total up to 19. The lead. Back at five. Drop off pass. Dalama! Emphasis jam. Brings the game back within two. Wow, what a big dunk. Oh, Dalama letting us know that the material magic are going nowhere. And they're still in this content and want it. Perry driving. Nice pass. Wide open. Murray makes the three. Time and space. Quinton, time and space just way too much for Murray, who is all the way up to 15 points in this game. That was a fantastic team play and a good shot by Murray. There's Kandulu, who's just a menace inside the paint. And he's right time, right place. Douglas Kandulu may not have too many field goals. This is three of nine from the field, but it is those 17 rebounds 
that have been the difference and he's also got three blocks he has been a force on the glass unfortunately though the free throw struggles have not been good he's just 0 for 6 and he makes that's commentator's blessing the commentator's blessing because they know these are big free throws Kandulu one of two scramble for the rebound and that's a aggressive take by Ubis and the foul called gonna be Ari in the penalty yeah, Perry. That, that foul went against Dalama it's just he's first in the game Perry around the screen Perry drives by blocked wow great defense now the magic the drop off wide open in the corner Kainda and uh, out comes the base and he'll pick up the foul that's gonna send Kainda to the free throw line as a uh, Ferroviario de Beira just in the penalty and have a look here we've seen that time and time again two Matero Magic defenders and you can take a pick whether it's Mikula Bai or Ntlalama but they were both right time right place it was beautiful timing there off that block and with that foul Q Mufunyana has fouled out of the game well he was struggling to establish some momentum in the game it was stop and start for him throughout and they do need his size inside the paint four point game on that miss control now shot comes and it's shorted Juana or Mungwamba can't find it Perry tries and there's a block it comes in another fantastic defensive play and the ball comes off it looked like it came off a magic player but they're gonna say Murray got the last touch I thought it came off a debate repair I think that's the right call from the referees and that's why we have differing perspectives and the referees ultimately win because they made the call and here Kainda out on the open floor drives and look at that great defense from Mungo Ambe. comes across and then the scramble and you may have a case but uh, the Bera player stepped on the ball outside of the line nonetheless it is Matero Magic Basketball and down the stretch here Q we can see how badly both these teams want it you can see the effort execution matters shot clock winding down and then Goma had no choice but to put the shot up and poorly utilized possession on that one decision making crucial for both these teams five point game Goma up on Perry hands off Base back to Perry finds Murray Murray puts the ball on the floor the pull from the free throw line and he'll make it cool as a cucumber good fake there from Murray to send the defenders flying to give himself some space that's a great read by Murray William Perry the material magic continue to come back with this matter of the matches William Perry well it's Perry around drops off the pass Numamare fakes Numamare gets the shot to go that's a big make first field goal for Numamare comes at the right time takes yeah. the game back to two positions no Monday has stayed with a struggle to score and the shot comes in as Matero magic continue their magic from the perimeter back and forth we go here and there seems to be an issue just with the the scoreboard in the arena
And that timeout was a, a technical timeout from the referees because scoreboard had Ferroviario de Beira up at 63, but Matero Magic, of course, made the two consecutive threes courtesy of Piri. And now, just confirming everything. Trying to make sure that there is parity. They refer back to the table. They're just going to check the scoring from the table side to align Magic and Beira. And uh, I think they've, they finally might have got it right. Yeah, it looks like they've now corrected the score. It is now a three-point game in the last 44 seconds of this one. The referee there trying to make an adjustment to the game clock, saying that there's just 42.3 seconds left. This is where referees, players, coaches have to be at their sharpest every single movement every single aspect of the game matters because now just trying to get the clock to 42 seconds referee referee wants it back at 42 seconds and now they finally got it back Perry should be final two possessions. They will try and hold Perry around the Obish screen. Perry skies from the mid range and he knocks it down. Big time shot from Will Perry. Big time players make big time shots. And William Perry is a big time player, Keith. 23 big points for Perry and Ferroviario de Beira. And Goma will try the long range bomb. Not there. Back it goes to Perry. And there's a quick foul. Piri. And that is the man you do not want to send to the free throw line. William Perry, who is currently 5 for 5 and a perfect 100% from the charity stripe. Timeout comes here and there will be some strategizing. 7.8 seconds, depending on whether Perry makes or not, will allow either the coaches to try to throw the Ario de Vera, want to take as much time off the clock as possible. So Perry might even consider missing the second shot. But it's probably better if he makes both to take the game to two possessions because it will allow Matero Magic to move the ball forward. Well, in fact, Q, Matero Magic are not in foul trouble. And so it'll be an inbound play for um, the de Vera team. And so they'll have to foul two more times in order to send this DeBerry team to the free throw line and stop the clock. That's absolutely right. And yes, Coach Luis Hernandez, Luis Lopez will know that. And they will try and take as much time off the clock as possible. You see the body language of the Matero Magic players. You see the body language of Ferroviario de Beira as they make their way out. So it is actual inbound for Ferroviario de Beira. Quick foul. I mean, they, they managed to take some time off the clock there. Um, and force Matera Magic to, to foul them once again, and now it's just six seconds left. That was a quick foul. But into the hands of William Perry, right? If you're Matera Magic, that is not the guy you want going to the free throw line. Kind of afternoon, kind of evening that Will Perry has had. He will want... Just put the icing on the cake as far as his personal performance has... 23 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, and misses his first free throw 
That might have been on purpose. Try to take some time off as the shot comes up and Piri does not connect and it's gonna bring us to the close on this one. The spirited fight back by the Matero Magic of Zambia who were down as much as 18. They came within a single possession, but at the end of the day, it was just great execution, a little bit of luck, and steel nerves down the stretch for this Ferviario de Beira outfit as they eke a win over the Matero Magic out of Zambia. And uh, if you're looking at the performance right now, they would be happy that they were able to come away with this win, uh, Ferroviario de Beira, but credit to the Matero Magic for the performance on the day. Credit to the Matera Magic indeed. They are yet to win a game at this level of the competition, even the previous, but they continue to get better. And we see them itch this gap now. Two and six of the Barrier, one of the better teams that we've seen, a team that has been to the Basketball Africa League before. And at full time, it's Ferroviario de Beira 63, Matero Magic 57. And looking at the full-time stats, 16 from the two-point range for both teams. And closely contested from the three-point range as well, Ferreira de Beira hitting seven from outside. And Matera Magic just six free throws, though, the story of this game. De Beira hitting 10 of those, and Matera Magic just seven. As we have a look at some of the highlights, and yes, that man, Will Perry, coming off the little short corner for the jumper, Kainda, knocking it down from the outside. Perry Pray provided one of his three assists into the corner. Nemamade was also quite impressive. Perry came alive down the stretch for the Matero Magic. Found his range. Six points for that man. And Will Perry just cool his eyes in every single position and up and in went that man in the Lama. there's just so many great performances individually that they can string together perry there on the finish and with his 23 points led the way as we take a look at the full-time stats full-time stats they field goal 22 of 66 for Matera magic and 23 of 64 for de Beira. and the offensive rebounding six and six and defensive 27 and 22 for Matera. And the steals they De Beira was seven and Matera was just three.